Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer <clears throat> on this Monday of the third week of Lent. Our readings today, our first reading from the second book of Kings, we hear the story of Naaman. Naaman is a, a Syrian soldier, a high-ranking soldier, and apparently they were involved with some conflicts with Israel, and during the conflicts they took a few prisoners along the way, and one of the prisoners, a young girl who was the servant girl of Naaman, the soldier's wife, uh, Naaman also happened to be beside Jeho besides a high-ranking soldier, uh, a leper. And I apparently had a small, small case of leprosy on, on his arm, I believe it was. And anyway, he, uh, of course, leprosy does nothing but get worse. So this young Israeli girl um, tells Naaman that if he goes to the prophet of her land, Israel, and uh, presents himself before him, he he would be cured. And so the king, Naaman's king, sent Naaman to Israel along with many gifts, offerings, uh, went to the king first, misunderstanding the girl's direction. The king, I'm no God, I can't do this. But Elisha, the prophet, said, have him come to me. So Naaman gets to Elisha's house and Elisha instructs Naaman to go to the River Jordan and plunge himself in seven times and he will be cleansed of his leprosy. Well, Naaman uh, bristled at that idea, uh, thinking, we've got springs and water in Damascus, I can do that there. And he was a little upset, probably expecting uh, Elisha to wave a, a magic wand, uh, so to speak, and just instant cure. Uh, but he was asked to do something. He was asked to do something that he didn't really care to do and was upset and was getting ready to leave. But Naaman's uh, friends, associates, to the people with him, encouraged him to listen to the prophet to you know had he asked him to do something extraordinary he would have done it but this is this seemed you know kind of silly and so anyway at the encouragement of his friends he went and did as the prophet asked and lo and behold he was cured of his leprosy went back and declared his faith in the one true god And so a soul was saved. A soul was brought to into the fold of God's people. That's paired with a gospel from Luke today. Jesus is in Nazareth, his hometown. And the people there aren't having none of Jesus. They know him. This is the kid we watch grow up the son of the carpenter, Joseph and Mary. We know him. What's, what's his deal? What, who does he think he is? So Jesus says to them, no prophet is without honor except in the place, in his native place. And then he goes on to tell them that in the days of the prophet Elijah, there were many widows, but none were helped except a foreigner, a widow in another, from another part of the, the world. And then in Elisha's day, <clears throat> he brings up Naaman. <coughs> there were many lepers in the days of Elisha, <clears throat> but none were cured except the Syrian Naaman. Well, the people that Jesus was talking were, were talking to got all up in arms about that. Jesus was just 
telling the truth. But they brought him up to the brow of the hill like a cliff and we're going to throw him down headlong. And he just walked away from them because it wasn't yet his time. So a couple things here with these two, two stories. Now, the, the other one that Jesus mentions from Elijah, if you remember this story, there was a widow and she had a child. And the child, they were, it was in the middle of a, a drought. There was no food. They were very low on supplies, nothing left, maybe one more meal, and then they were going to die because there was nothing. So the prophet comes to her and says, bake me a cake. <laughs> you might remember that story, bake me a cake. That's like Alicia telling Naaman, go and jump in the river seven times. It didn't really make much sense. But we're called to do things sometimes. We have to do things that seem counterintuitive, seem kind of out there. But with faith, if we, if we do these things that we're asked to do, you know, it's like with Naaman thinking of the magic wand. Sometimes, you know, we, we have illnesses, right? We have to call the doctor. We have to go get procedures done, take medication, all this stuff. We have to participate in, cooperate with the workings of God. He gave doctors wisdom to help us. You know, he, we, we have to act, have an active role in the grace we're given and share it and, and you know, all that. And, you know, talking about prophets, Elisha and Elisha, we're all prophets, all of us, through our baptism. We've all been sealed with that blessing, priest, prophet, and king at our baptism. And so it is with us. We, we have to share God's blessings that we receive. Not just with, now, Christianity is not a private club with benefits and perks for members only, we have to recognize everyone as a child of God and be merciful as our Lord and Savior, our God in heaven is merciful. We are also called to have that same mercy for everyone. Even if they don't speak our language, if they don't, they're not Catholic or, you know, how... We have biases, we have prejudices. We, we can't, we shouldn't do that. We need to be even-handed. When we see someone in need, we fill that need if we're able. And so, you know, the two things, being active, being participators in the workings of God, and being even-handed, non-judgmental, not prejudicial, but open to, to all. So today, as we reflect on these readings, let us ask for God's grace to keep us tuned in <coughs> to his gifts, to us, to his blessings upon us, help us to recognize them and to share them, and to bless others with what we've been blessed with. So we pray our evening prayer on this lovely Monday, as all Mondays are, aren't they? Mondays are magnificent. So we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance, Lord. Make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our eyes are fixed intently on the Lord waiting for his merciful help. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens, my eyes like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their lords, like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress. So our eyes are on the Lord our God till he show us his mercy. 
Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the rich, with the proud man's disdain. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father in heaven, we lift our eyes to you and pray. Confound the scorn of the proud and graciously show us your mercy. Our eyes are fixed intently on the Lord, waiting for his merciful help. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. <clears throat> if the Lord had not been on our side, this is Israel's song. If the Lord had not been on our side when men, when, when men rose against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled. Then would the waters have engulfed us, the torrent gone over us, over our head would have swept the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who did not give us a prey to their teeth. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Indeed, the snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you foretold that your disciples would be despised on account of your name, but that not a hair of their heads is ever forgotten. In times of persecution, defend and revive us by the power and comfort of the Holy Spirit, so that we can be freed from our enemies and praise your saving help. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God chose us in his Son to be his adopted children. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God chose us in his Son to be his adopted children. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers, I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may judge what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. I make my prayer for mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. Joseph, come here. Come here, Joe. Come here. Come here, say hello. Hey, baby. Jesus walked through the crowd and went away. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. 
my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, <coughs> to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Jesus walked through the crowd and went away. Our Lord Jesus Christ has saved us from our sins. As his people, let us call out to him, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Lord Christ, we pray for your holy church. You gave yourself up to make it holy, cleansing it with water and the life-giving word. Renew it constantly and purify it by penance. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Good Master, show young people the way you have chosen for each of them. May they walk in it and find fulfillment. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. In your compassion you healed all forms of sickness. Bring hope to the sick and raise them up. Teach us to love and care for them. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Make us mindful of the dignity you gave us in baptism. May we live for you at every moment. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. May the dead rise to glory in your peace. Hello, Penny. Grant us with them a share in your kingdom. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. <laughs> yes, Penny. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Whoops. Careful. There you go. Remember us, Lord, when you come to your kingdom and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God of mercy, free your church from sin and protect it from evil. Guide us, for we cannot be saved without you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Little ball of energy, that one. So, I think I mentioned the other day I have two, two extra dogs and a cat for temporary. My son's looking for a new house and they, they had to leave and uh, they, they haven't found a new one yet so temporary lodging at my house so they come with extra animals as well. It's awesome. It's been fun. And I told them they could stay as long as they can stand it so we'll see how it goes. Pray for them that they find a, a home uh, and uh, and uh, thank you for that. And uh, in the meantime, we just enjoy the uh, the extra activity around here. It's what keeps us young, right? 
Oh, God bless you all. Come here, Joseph. Come up here. Come here. Say hello. Come on. Come here. Joe, what up? Come here. Up. Okay. I don't know where the third one is. He's wandering around somewhere. But they enjoy being outside, as do I. Now we have the weather to do that, right? Okay, I'm rambling. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Rest well.